Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. So today I'm continuing with my series of me solving the um, Grand Prix puzzles from the recent Sudoku Grand Prix and then commenting about it. So another two today, including a classic. Today we have a classic and a fortress puzzle. So I'm going to show you my solve of those with the timer running underneath and here's the classic. Um, so the classics are getting a bit harder now, as you may have seen from the spreadsheet, this one was valued at some 24 points compared to the 14 previously. So expected to take over three minutes now, I think. So um, I'm spending my time putting in some Snyder notation. I've got one full number, the eight near the top, obviously, um, which is a start, but I think we find in this puzzle that it's not quite as straightforward as the other ones. Um, the one and seven up there have gone quite well, so that box is getting quite well filled in. Um, now, fours were identifiable as up there because given the four that must be placed in column eight in the top box, and given the fact that the top row is filled in this box, um, there's nowhere else in the top row for a four to go, so it had to be in one of those positions. And now by getting a three placed down here, which has been obvious for a while, but I've only just come around to it, that's placed me a three here, given me a four six pair here, and that looks fairly powerful. However, um, I hoped that would collapse column four, and it didn't. It enabled me to fill a seven pair in there, but that's all. Um, this could be one or five, and I'm still not sure which. Actually, what I'm missing here at this point, perhaps, is that five has to be in the top row of this box because of this five and this five, um, although that doesn't quite finish resolving where five goes down in the bottom left box up. Oh, that's me spotting it and the time I was solving it, just coming up to two minutes now. Some of the puzzle done, but not all that much. And I'm probably beginning to get a bit nervous at this point that it's going to um, solve more quickly with a bifurcation, or guess. Um, so let's see where I go next. I can't remember, to be honest. It's, it's a couple of days since I recorded the solve. Um, it's not clear in my mind. <coughs> Later events in this recording having somewhat driven that out, as you'll see. Ah, now I've gone for a five in the top corner. Um, how did I get that? Or is that, in fact, a guess? I think that might be a bifurcation. I don't think there was anything to show that that had to be a five. Now, oh, mind you, five there. Was that five there originally? Maybe that was determined, in which case that was the breakthrough needed. If it was a bifurcation, if it goes wrong, we may see me going back to undo it. But it's certainly unlocked a lot of the puzzle. Now, if it's right, that's fine. If it's wrong, then it, there will be need there will need to be some erasing done. Um, twos are limited there. I'm surprised there's not a bit more profit to be had down in column one at the moment, but apparently not. Sixes, fives there. Six, two, three, four, seven, five, one. Ones, ones could be usefully limited here. That will give us a one six pair down here, because only the only place in this right hand box for for a one is in column seven. There must be a one to go with the six in this box down here, and that would actually really limit the use of that box. But we found a way through anyway. Um, even if that had been a guess with the five at the top, it's going well enough as a solve to make me think at this point that it's probably the right assumption to have made. Uh, that fixes the one down there and an eight, nine pair. Yeah, the rest of that box fills. This box will fill 857. It was a 1 6 pair, as we said, in column 8 down there. It's 1 9 pair over here that can't be resolved. But surely the central row can be finished, yes. And yeah, we're coming to an end of this puzzle now. So 
over four minutes. I mean, I'm not up with the bar time on that, but not far behind it. And whether that took a guess or not, it's not too bad a time. Um, although it would have been nice to get through the middle stage of that puzzle, I think, a bit quicker. So four minutes, 50. There, just checking it is right. And now on to the fortress puzzle, which the rules are that any time a grey cell and a white cell share an edge, the grey cell must be higher. Now, I worked out very quickly what that meant for the middle box, where there are eight grey cells and only one that isn't. Now, obviously, every one of those grey cells must be higher than something else because they all share an edge with a white cell, so none of them can be one, so the one must be in the middle. And that's fine. However, what I did not then go on to do was make another deduction that is possible from that central box. And I'll leave you with that to think about for a while. Um, I did think it ought to be significant, but this is a very unusual type of puzzle. I think it requires a lot more kind of cold thinking about than the normal kind of Sudoku rotating the number of possibilities in one's, in one's mind. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm clearly, after a minute, struggling a bit to find anything to put in. Now that two, having got that three in the grid, and that's gone in because the reason that this grey cell can't be a three is that that would have to be higher than both white cells in the box at the top. So they would have to be two and one, and there's already a one in the box. So that grey cell can't be a three. The only place for a three in this box, therefore, is there. I finally worked out that the only place for a two in the top box, given this two and that two, is there because, again, a two couldn't go in the grey cell because it has to be higher than both these white cells. So that's enabling me to get a little bit of Snyder notation done over here. Two's in one of the white cells there because, again, they can't be in grey cells, which share two edges in the same box with white cells. The one one can never be in a grey cell if it's next to a white cell. You can actually get fortress patterns where a grey cell is only next to grey cells, and that can be very confusing because a one can go in them then, but not in this puzzle. So now I'm trying to limit what the possibilities are down in this box here. And again, because these central grey cells have four white edges, they can never be lower than any of the white cells surrounding them. Obviously, five is a complete minimum, and if five appears in the box already, then six becomes a minimum. Um, now, how did I work out that this cell wasn't a five originally? Remember. Uh, yeah, I think it's because I worked out this cell up here couldn't be a five. Now, once that can't be a five, because you would have to have four, two, three, and one surrounding it, and one's already been used in the box. Then five has to be in column seven up there. So down here, it has to be in column eight. Um, so, you know, I've managed to make a deduction or two, but I'm three minutes in. Now, over here, I managed to get an eight in the central box. Um, I think eight had to be in one of those two, given the other eights we've got. And it couldn't possibly be in the white cell here because it shares cells with two, shares edges with two grey cells. They can't both be nine. So having put that eight in, eight must appear in one of these two cells. And now one, whichever one it does appear in must be next to a nine. So because the grey cell has to be higher than the white. So an eight must go with a nine over there. Now given this eight, this eight, and this eight, the only place is left for an eight in the central box are over here, but unfortunately that doesn't work quite as well in placing anything in the connecting boxes. So now I'm back to working. I've sort of identified from just the size of numbers that there are some limited places for six, sevens and nines, but until I can get a triple of those, it's not really limiting anything else out of the picture. So we just carry on looking for something that will help. And to be honest, you know, I'd be thinking at this length of time in a puzzle and so little done of doing some sort of guess. But 
I can't even tell what sort of guess would help me here. Um, down in this box, you'd think that you'd be very confident that nine would go in one of the grey cells, but in fact, it's possible to go in the white cell here because that doesn't border a grey cell. So you just can't rule out all sorts of things. And that means you have to, you can't rule other things in even. Um, we've got a one now up here because I was able to identify from this one and this one that there had to be a one in the top of this box. Um, and therefore, one in one of these, white or grey, and one always has to be the lower of two digi digits, so it had to be in the white cell. Now, should that have helped me down here? I don't know. One, one, one. No, I don't think so. So I'm really floundering around. And I mean, the cause of the trouble is that I didn't spot something I could have spotted about the central box. Now, I got the one in, but as I hinted earlier, I didn't make much more progress. And now what I'll tell you about that is that the thing to consider is where does a two go in the central box? Um, and why that's important is because some of the cells are ruled out already. Those can't be twos. But wherever a two does appear in this central box, it must have a one immediately next to it outside the box. It can't possibly be in this top row because the two would need a one next to it above it. And there's a one there, the same as applied down here. So there are three cells left where there could be a two here, here and here. And if it was in one of the ones in the central row or column, then the one next to it would have to be, would be in conflict with the one in the central circle. So we can rule out those because of that two. We can rule out those because of that one. We can rule out that and that because of that one. And that places a two in this bottom left cell in, what is it, row six, column four. That two in turn places ones in both cells beside it. And that enables quite a lot of progress. And you know, I'm not saying, and I don't believe for a moment, that's the only deduction that you need to make at the start of solving this puzzle to make progress. But my goodness, it's a really helpful one. There may be other ways. Well, indeed, you know, I've come up with another way to solve the puzzle in the end, um, because I do, spoiler alert, finally get through it. But it's not easy. And I think I had to do some guesswork at some point and so forth. And had I spotted that thing with the twos, which I kind of come on later in the puzzle, um, it would have been a lot easier. And I think you can probably extend that out to work out where does a three go next and at least limit the possibilities there. Um, it's not quite as good because anyway, you could put a three, you could put a two outside and there aren't such limitations on twos. But that two, the ones that would have gone with it, they would have been helpful, especially at this point in this puzzle, they would have been very helpful. A one here would have sorted out this one pair. A one here would have sorted out this one pair. Um, I could have come down to a one in one of these two. You know, I'm not, I don't actually know because I haven't tried it that way around how quickly the puzzle solves if you do spot that, but I'm very, very confident that it's a lot quicker than this. Now, this puzzle was graded at the highest level we've come across so far in my solving of this test, but it's certainly not an extreme grade. And the implication is that the setters expect you to be able to kind of come up with that. Now I've solved maybe a dozen fortress puzzles in my time. It's not a, yet again, it's not a type I feel particularly comfortable with, but I said the same about the diagonal and the irregular. I'm not great at those and they went okay in this test. but. This one really didn't, as you can see. Now, again, up here, this is quite limited with the numbers in the row. It can only be four, five, or six, but, um, and I should be able to work out it couldn't possibly be a four because it needs a four at least above it. So that cell has to be four or five. This has to be five or six, which is greater. And then this has to be two or four. No, it could still be a five as well. Um, 
So, you know, it's gradually an attrition process, cell by cell and box by box. You get a little bit more information about how to solve the puzzle if you're going at it in this way and if it's a particularly hard puzzle. Now, this nine here is surprisingly not helped with the nines in the boxes on the outside which have fortress cells in because up here this nine could easily be um, this cell could easily be a nine because it's a fortress cell surrounded by three whites but this one could also be a nine because it doesn't have a fortress cell next to it and the same is true for this pair of cells over here so I'm carrying on solving here as best I can now I've got six nine there I can see now that this cell here on the right which must also be six or nine so that would have been useful as a pair to fill in that would make this and this one and four in some order but I'm not sure that that necessarily resolves anything even knowing that I'm still trying to work out what's going on with the ones what could this cell be they're not as limited as I'd hoped 11 minutes nearly gone and still what I've put in six seven about 12 numbers it's a tough puzzle for me and uh, i'm conscious how how badly it's going at this point a um, bit more consideration of central box but still not coming up with anything now what should i be looking at at this point the trouble with these edge boxes is they have no gray cells in them so the constraints not giving you any limiting factors there and that's that's pretty tough because you know although eight is feeding into this box quite heavily you just don't get much more from the gray cells now i should know that that can't be a nine i have a feeling this was a guess here i've made an assumption i know that nine is one of these two cells now if i assume that it's a nine in the central one that gives me an eight here it fixes the nine here it makes this pair 5-6, which makes the pair above it 4-5 in this box. And that really does start limiting things quite helpfully. That 8 has positioned this 8. Um, but is this enough to make any deductions? Yeah, look, over here I could do that 6-9 pair as well that I spotted earlier. This cell must be a 6 just in this um, array, given what's in its row and its column. And that makes this one a nine so there is there is something to be said for the this guess which I think I made here so, ah, and now it's become impossible because this cell there's nothing it can be once you've put the nine in there this being a six means this is impossible and I think hopefully I'm about to spot that making other deductions based off that six now but I need to be looking at this cell here and once I spot that then we're going to look I finally spotted it highlighted the cell realized it's impossible now we can go back and that nine which I did think was unlikely I can finally prove is not the case so I'm going to start going backwards now until we get to the point where I chose that as the nine and now we know this is the nine this is the 8 next to it because the 8 had to stick with the 9 so that 8 resolves the 8's over here and I can at least move forward knowing that that's right so I think up here again I get 5 and 6 fixed in this in the top of this box and that fixes 4 and 5 above them um, 4 must be down here because now that's a 5-6 pair there's a lot of limitation down here and it might be now, while considering these grey cells, that I eventually start thinking about where can a 2 be and realising it couldn't be there and it can't be here and it can't be here. And suddenly, I've 14 minutes in, I've worked out the deduction that I could have made after about 10 seconds and saved probably 12 or 13 minutes of my time solving this puzzle. So, I mean, hats off to you if you made that deduction early on or if you made some other deduction that I haven't seen, do tell us in the comments that would have helped solve this more easily. But certainly this, this idea about where the two goes in the central box is very important.
there's no need to write about that in the comments if you've seen it and I haven't, although you may not have watched far enough to know that I have realised it in the end. Um, I don't know, maybe it's not that tough a puzzle, but to me this was very hard. And Even now, even with the breakthrough made, I don't just know about the two, but I know about nine and eight here and where the five, six pair is, and what that does to the four, five pair here. Still, it's a tough puzzle. It's taking a long time to get through this. Now, I think that box was limited to two and nine. I'm just checking the logic there. No, it wasn't. No, that was Snyder notation, so it wasn't that limited. Um, the only place left for a two in row three is there now. So twos are getting placed all around the grid. And I think we've only got one left to place over here. So that is at least a step forward. Ones as well. They're able to resolve this ones. I think we could at this point finish off all the ones in the grid as well. Um, and often with variants like Fortress, it really helps to consider the highest and lowest valued digits ones and nines then twos and eights and once you start placing them it limits the places for other possibilities uh, for other digits yeah so i'm finally figuring out i can place all the ones and twos um, there's a one here to go in that i haven't put in basically as i come across each deduction within a box i'm filling in the possibilities there finally notice the six nine pair here and because of this one that i've placed that gives me the four one pair and now i can start getting some real traction 16 minutes into the solve of this puzzle oh i can't tell you how much it hurts to take that long solving this sort of puzzle but that is the way it goes and you know Deduction by deduction, this stuff's coming out now. Um, surely I know that's a five because of this five over here. That has the six nine pair is resolved by the fortress constraint. This can't be a nine, obviously, or it would be bigger than the seven eight outside it. Um, and this box is finally finishing off, although we don't know how the nine six pair is resolved there. But given that one of them's a six, this one isn't anymore. It's a seven. Um, five can go in this cell because of this five up here. Six, another six nine pair. Eight three one down here we can resolve. And then finally that gets that last one in the grid that I could have done for ages. Um, nine six seven still to place. Now one of these is a seven. But nine six and seven are all big enough to outrank the white cells next to them. Um, seven there, still a six nine pair here, and six nine pairs look like they're going to be kind of the last point of the puzzle. We've got a six nine pair in this box, and in this box, and in that box, and in that box, but finally we had to have a seven here. This couldn't be a nine, obviously, because it's next to a grey cell, and even that sort of deduction takes me ages to work out, and it really shouldn't. It's much more straightforward than that in this sort of puzzle. Um, so not one of my favourites at all, but I am at least finishing it off now and going to come in under 20 minutes for sure. So congratulations if you did better than me in that puzzle. It's certainly an opportunity if you don't normally and it won't surprise me at all. 18 minutes 22. I mean, that's not a good time. And let's go back to the spreadsheet and see how that makes us look. Um, And, oh, sorry, well, never mind, you can read the numbers here, I'll correct the uh, fonting later. But in the first classic puzzle, 290 seconds for a par time of 216 is not too bad. That brought my percentage behind time down to 42, which I was hoping would continue to fall throughout the test. But no, this puzzle, which was meant to take me... 369 seconds, which was meant to take me just about six minutes, took me 18 and a half minutes. Just shocking. And uh, three times as long as it should, and that's put me really behind the eight ball. So we'll be continuing the series in due course, because I did pledge to be honest with my solving here, and uh, I still enjoy it. So I hope that's given you 
um, some entertainment, at least watching me stumble. Bye for now.